coronavirus. What went wrong with the UK's contract tracing app? We talked about this when we first announced it, didn't we? And we said this is physically impossible. Yeah. They're not going to have enough access to the Bluetooth API mm-hmm. when the app's closed yeah. on a- Apple to be able to run it. The same with Android. It'd just kill the process if it's open for too long. Mm-hmm. We did say, yeah. You need to have it baked into the OS as like an update mm-hmm. for it to work. Yeah. Like it flat out won't work as an application. Yeah. It? Like a, an APK or I don't know what is it a D is it DPK or something? What? What's an app file called on iOS? I can't remember. I can't, I can't, it's been years since I've like jailbroken an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. The, like the actual APK file doesn't have enough rights on the phone. Oh, okay. To be able to do what it was supposed to do, huh. and we we said this as soon as it came out. Yeah, we said that this is just nonsense. There's no way they can do it without interfacing with Google and Apple. Yeah, but it's their operating system. They set the rules for what an app can do. Yeah, I agree. And if they yeah. want to go outside of that, they're gonna need special dispensation from these companies. Yeah. That being said, shall we see what the actually says. happened? Yeah, sure. After months of work, the UK has ditched the way its contact tracing app works, prompting a blame game between the government and two of the world's biggest tech firms. So what went wrong? At the end of March, I got a text from a senior figure in the UK's technology industry, a person saying they were helping the NHS on a very substantial project that were launching days and potentially saved thousands of lives. That was the first I knew of a plan to build a contact tracing app. The tech had somehow assumed that I could be an advisor to the project and made it clear that I could not be my role and I was very interested in following its progress. Three months on, after missing the deadline after deadline, there's been a radical change in direction. The app has been developed so far has been scrapped, unsurprisingly, because it won't ever work. Yeah. Are you comfy? Come back in. <laughs> I think I. Sorry. Now, nearly three months on, after missing deadline after deadline, there's been a radical change. Uh, the app has been developed so far has been scrapped, and a new approach will be tried based on a system created by Apple and Google. Obviously, you, you're going to need that OS level access to be able to do this, so mm-hmm. you need to go through. Apple and Google's way of doing it. But there's no guarantee when, if ever, this will be rolled out. So what went wrong? So you can clear that using Bluetooth was tricky. Tricky? It's physically impossible by what they were trying to do. Reports suggested that people were reluctant to download the app because it had to be kept open at all times. Yeah, well... It's not just that. Like... If you if you have it open and your phone locks in your pocket, yeah. after five minutes it'll stop working. Yeah. Like so, you'd physically have to when you're on about, you'd have to be on your phone every five minutes or reopening the app. Yeah. And God forbid you want to do anything else with your phone while you're not in the house. Mm. Like it, that's called not working. That. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna tell me everyone in the country is gonna do that, even mm. half. They wouldn't. It's not. Assume. You're never gonna get. Enough people using that system. Yeah, you're not going to tell me you're ever going to get enough people for it to ever even be worth having the app. Mm. It's just going to be a bunch of misinformation. Yeah. Because you're going to see hotspots and stuff which aren't real. Yeah. Because basically more people will be using the app in that area than others. Mm-hmm. So it won't make it, it won't mean right. it. Then on 10th of April came a surprise announcement from Google and Apple, two tech giants whose software virtually all the smartphones depend, said they were going to develop a system that would have Bluetooth contract tracing apps work smoothly. Here's the catch. Only privacy focused apps would be allowed to use the platform. Apple and Google favoured decentralised applications where the matching between infected people and their list of contacts happened between their phones directly. The alternative was for the matching to be done on a central computer owned by a health authority, which would end up storing lots of very sensitive information, which is what we have already talked about in co- like offline in regards to the NHS app, mm-hmm. where it's storing everything in a government server where there's absolutely no reason to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My phone can just tell your phone that we've been near each other. 
The app the NHS was developing was based on a centralised model, which the Oxford scientists felt was vital if the health service was able to monitor the virus outbreak properly. Two days later, with quite a fanfare, unveiled plans for the COVID-19 app promising all data will be handled according to the highest ethical and security standards, but only be used for NHS care and research. Again, but the problem is, if they get hacked, all that information goes. Yeah. Whereas, if you just don't store it, you don't have the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it says there, that the immediately privacy campaigners, politicians and technology experts raise concerns. Yeah. I also had 25 years experience in the NHS being incompetent in at developing systems and repeatedly breaking their privacy promises. In a sense, you kind of expect it because they're, they're healthcare professionals. They're not there to do what Google does, mm -hmm. which build the most secure systems they can to yeah. protect their user data. Mm -hmm. It's just not what they're in the business of. No, yeah. So it's not... It's not a surprise that like they tend to have problems when they try and do this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I said at the time, like if you want to build a system like this, you need to go to the experts. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying and that. Frankly, the only people who are experts experts in launching a cross-platform like thing like this mm. are probably Google, Apple, and Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> like probably the only three you could talk to. Yeah. Who, of this scale, which is millions of people, I would say it's not just necessarily the fact that it's a hack, per se, to, mm. to breach it. Anything like, could. If you, if you say, have a COVID tracing app, yeah. and a decentralised thing said, I think you, you should get a check, what would you do? What do you mean, what, what would I do? Yeah, if it, if it came up on your phone and said you need to get tested for COVID, yeah. what would you do? You'd yeah. go and get tested for COVID, okay, right? Yeah. So the yeah. NHS would have the stats. Anything. It'd come up and say, yep, yeah, you've got to COVID. But it'd add, it'd add one to the stat of wherever you live. Yeah. And their heat maps are all produced off that kind of stuff. Mm. So all that data they'd have, wouldn't they? And all the data that they're trying to collect with this. Yeah. So using actually collecting data through the app itself is meaningless because mm. it could it may or may not be worth anything mm. it could come up and say 300,000 people in your local area should get tested but they could all get tested and none of them have it yeah you know it's the yeah. it's the it's the results after they've been tested that surely matters to the NHS probably yeah Meanwhile, privacy conscious Germany became the latest country to switch its app to a decentralized model using the Apple and Google system. It's in that Apple had made it clear that it would not cooperate with a centralized application. A, Brit a British academic working in the consortium developing decentralized apps warned the NHS that it was on the wrong path, asking on Twitter, Will the UK push ahead with an app that will not work on iPhone? Which has devastated its adoption in Singapore. Yeah. Well, the UK pushed ahead with the trial to get underway. Uh, first sight of the app showed it was very simple, asking users whether they had, had a fever or cough. But any symptoms alert sent out to contacts merely echoed the standard stay alert act advice. Yeah, sure is though. You could have a cough and you could have a temperature and it could be nothing. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just about being safe, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. 18th of June, it all became clear. The BBC broke the story that the government was abandoning the centralised app and moving on to something based on Apple and Google. Despite all the spin, the Isle of Wight had highlighted a disastrous flaw in the app. It failed to detect 96% of contact with Apple iPhone. Obviously, the blame game had already begun. No, the blame game shouldn't even start. Because no. I knew this was going to happen. And I'm not even a developer. Mm, yeah. Like, this is just simple stuff about like what permissions an app can have, mm -hmm. and how an, how the underlying like OS deals with it. Yeah. The the Bluetooth stack in an iPhone only gives you very limited access when the app's not running, or when it's in background. So it sees it misses near enough everything when you're not got the app open, mm -hmm. obviously. And Android kills the process after a fixed amount of time. Yeah. If you don't keep opening it again and again and again. 
Apple says it did not know the UK was working on a hybrid version of the NHS app using tech it developed with Google. Meanwhile, there's a scant proof from anywhere around the world that smartphone apps using Bluetooth are ineffective. Back in March, it seemed like a hugely powerful device as much as carry might help us. Now it looks as though a human being on the end of a phone is a far better option. Yeah. So yeah, they had, they had the exact problem we all knew they was going to have. Yeah. And it's embarrassing probably how much money was spent. Probably, yeah. To figure out something. I could have, me, not a developer, just someone who's mildly interested in tech could have said that's never going to work. <laughs> like, what were they doing? It really is ridiculous. It's ridiculous that it's took this long in a pandemic for them to just go, oh yeah, this is like not even possible. Mm. What are we doing? As much as people might not want to work, like download a Google app yeah. or an Apple application mm. or an Apple supported one, I don't know. If you're trying to install something on Windows, if you're trying to install something on Windows, yeah. like on, on this computer, mm. that needs permissions beyond what a normal piece of software can do. Mm. You're going to need to work with Microsoft. Yeah. Just like if you want to install something on a phone that goes over and above what an, an application can do, mm. you're going to need to work with Google yeah. or Apple. It's not a huge leap to, to uh, jump. It's far. not a big ju thing to jump. You yeah. do, you're at their mercy at that point because mm. you're, as you're asking for a favor, yeah. essentially. You're saying, I want to do something that which you don't allow. Please, can you help me? Yeah. You have to do it, however they accept. And when they announced the, uh, you know, the contact tracing app, mm. the the test in Switzerland. Yeah. Google and Apple had already announced that they were working together. They was releasing a, a decentralized way of doing it. I said, there's no way that they're going to go to the effort of making a decentralized way of. Yeah, there's no way they're going to go to the effort of making a decentralized way of doing all this and then allow the go UK government to just do it a different way. They're going to say, stop you, we've got, a, we've got an API for this, use it or don't. Yeah. And that's what that's essentially what it seems like they've done. It was it's so obviously going to happen, especially in a sensitive time like this, where this needed to be done yesterday. Yeah. That they've managed to mess it up so bad. Yeah.